What's up, YouTubers? I wanted to talk today about something that's like the hottest topic since sliced bread, and that's uh, all these Dodge truck frames snapping like this piece of wood. So you've probably seen pictures of these big dually Dodge trucks where the frames are broken in half. I know this week on the forums, on the, the Facebook groups, there's been like 20 different posts of all these trucks and a lot of discussion on what's actually going on. And I think I have at least some ideas. I thought it'd be fun to sit down and talk about what might be going on and how to avoid it. And if it is even avoidable and if it's operator error, you know, that could be a possibility too. So let's get into it. So let's start off with this. Now this is an older picture, but it demonstrates roughly the same year Dodge truck where the frame broke in half in the back of it. Now this is not an exclusive to Dodge issue. I mean, there's pictures floating around of Fords and Chevys with broken frames much the same way, but there seems to be a rash of Dodge trucks lately that have hit the interwebs <laughs> with broken frames. So this truck in particular, I believe is a 3500 dually and they have a pretty substantial camper on the back. So here's another picture of the same truck. These trucks tend to break the frame in exactly the same spot. And I'll show you a picture of that in a second here. Here's where they're breaking. Where the factory bed mounts, or well the mounts are welded to the frame directly in front of that, the frame basically cr cracks, likely starting at the top, and then just splits all the way down. So the, the mode of failure is very similar. The question is why? Let's look at some more photos just to get an idea what we're dealing with here. Here's another low detailed version of a 2014 or 15 Ram, same issue. And here's another one that was in the Home Depot parking lot where they loaded apparently two pallets of shingles on it and the frame broke. You can see here, this is a picture I used earlier broke in the same spot as those other ones. So the first question we need to answer is, were they overloaded? This is the payload capacity, the bottom right of a 3500 Ram with the Cummins. It's 5,470 pounds. This is for the dual rear wheel trucks. This is the only capacity listed. And this includes everything in the bed as well as any kind of gear and additional passengers inside the vehicle. That's not just payload in the bed capacity. So the next question is, well, what they had in the bed, was it over that? Let's look into that. According to Google, they claim between 2520 and 3360 for a pallet of shingles. Now how accurate that is, I have no idea. I'm not a roofer and I don't handle shingles all day but those numbers are pretty interesting. At the lowest end of it, they're within 400 pounds of being overweight on that truck. So I would say that at least the truck in the Home Depot parking lot that broke in half, odds are that it was overloaded, are pretty good. Now in the case of this Dodge, this was already looked into heavily and the camper dry weight was well over, I guess, low 4,000 pounds. And by time you added propane and water and sewage and gear and all of that, it too would have been overweight. So these trucks share similarities. All of them were overloaded at the time that the frame broke, and they likely were overloaded in the past, which contributed towards the frame failing. But they're also like quad cabs or mega cabs with fairly long beds. So you have a very long frame length, which means that when you put a lot of weight on it, there's a lot of twisting action going on on that frame, which it has to get released somewhere, like either the frame needs to flex and bend a little bit to be able to move with the weight, or if it's extremely rigid and strong, things will likely break. So the frame may break. Now let's look at this picture again. One thing that's concerning to me is that I don't know at what year, but Ram went to a box frame for their trucks versus C-channel. They've probably done that for a long time, 
I know that Ford stuck with the C-channel for a very long time up until recently. Now box frames can be incredibly strong, but in the case of this frame, they're using pretty thin material. So thin material is not going to be as strong as thicker. Now because it's boxed, where it's an enclosed box, there will be more inherent strength to that than a slightly thicker C-channel, but it's something to wonder about as far as strength. The other concerning thing is, is that I know that Dodge switched to using higher strength steel for their frames. So from the best information I could find on a quick search, they went from something like 25 or 30,000 PSI tensile strength steel to 50,000. Well, higher strength steel may have issues when you weld on it. Now, if you notice, they all broke right where that upright that goes to the factory bed was welded. It's possible that being that the material is so thin and then you deposit a weld on the top that the welded area is brittle either because they didn't follow proper procedures for welding that material. Maybe if the frame is heat treated after welding it was improperly heat treated. Any number of things can happen that could have caused the top of that frame section to become brittle and when it's stressed and flexed via having excessive amounts of weight on it or even within reasonable design limits of weight on it that a crack would develop right at the toe of that weld on that upright which all of the pictures I've seen depict the crack likely starting there so that leads me to believe that the improper welding or procedure for welding is a contributing factor towards why they're cracking there. Another factor here is that if you look at this truck, which is a modern 2022 uh, 4500 Ram cabin chassis, is that you can see on the heavy duty trucks, the cabin chassis trucks, that they have flat rails. And I believe this is not boxed. I believe it's C-channel by the look of it. Well, they don't have those uprights to attach to a normal pickup truck box. It's just literally a C-channel or box frame that's flat. If you want a heavy-duty truck and you're planning on putting a flatbed on it, using this is far smarter than that 3500 normal pickup truck box setup because the flatbed in the case of this truck, which is a four-door by the way, the bed will be supported by the whole length of the frame. And you can also get longer wheelbases on these trucks where the axle is far enough back to where if you have a lot of weight behind the axle, that by moving the axle further back, the load is better carried directly over the axle rather than behind it. So simply by buying a cabin chassis truck, which may even be available in a 3500 dually where it would have this style frame, would likely alleviate the problem as well. Now I know with Ford, some of the F450s in the past years actually came out with a 3500 chassis where it was not a flat rail like this, but in most cases you get a, a rail system like this where it's just flat. Far better of a setup if you want to haul a lot of payload. It's likely a lot stronger, more close to what you'd find in a semi than you do a normal pickup truck. Next question is, is that going from a 3500 to 4500, what would you really gain? Well, in the case of the same year pickup truck, so a 2017 dual rear wheel, same Cummins motor, it would step up the payload to 7,250 pounds from 5,470. So a significant upgrade in payload. Now, I believe this is for a 4500 with a standard box. A cabin chassis 4500 could actually be more because it's based on a different frame and it likely has different spring options that you can't get in a normal 4500 or 3500 truck. Which brings up my next point. I'm not really sure why guys insist on buying 3500 series trucks of any brand and then trying to haul a lot of weight with them. Like, I never understood why dual rear wheel was offered in a 3500. If you need a dual rear wheel truck, pretty much you should be looking at a 4500 series truck. I mean, generally speaking, no matter what brand, 
450 or 4500 is built much better to be handling that kind of payload than a 3500 truck. So it just seems to me like people are attracted to the 3500 truck's price point um, being a couple grand less more than likely and probably comes with a bed which you can put a camper in or something over a cabin chassis, say 4500. But, you know, for a couple grand difference, buy the, the more commercial truck. Now maybe, and I'm not sure on it, maybe the insurance is an issue as well. So maybe that's why people take 3500s. I, I have heard in some state you pay based on gross vehicle weight. I mean, that's true in Wisconsin where my plate costs more for my truck than it does for like uh, an F-150. But still, like, I don't, I guess I don't understand the, the desire to get a small truck and then overload it. For the same reason, I don't get why people buy like F-250s or 2,500 Rams with the Cummins in it and the big diesels. It's like pretty much you put a thousand pounds in a bed and in an four-door, you carry three passengers plus yourself and gear, and you're almost overloaded just right then and there. So if you're going to be doing big boy truck stuff, you should probably buy a big boy truck. Which brings me to my last kind of thought on this, and that's the question is, can they be repaired? Now, uh, your average dealer or, say, General Motors or Chrysler or Ford will probably say, no, it can't be repaired and they would suggest a 100% new frame, which honestly, from a liability standpoint, probably is the right way to go. But the question, can it be repaired via welding? I would say yes. A skilled welder could repair that frame, but you got a couple things going against you. One, due to the cracking and stretching of the material, you're going to have fatiguing of that steel in the general area where it cracked. So that's going to be a huge problem. Just simply doing a repair with a good root pass and cover with TIG or, or say, dual shield MIG or something, you know, to lay a real quality weld on that, that may join the two pieces together. But if the nearby area has uh, weakness due to the stretching and the fatiguing, then it will likely still fail. So the only real proper way to repair that is going to be to do likely a multi-pass weld all the way around on clean material so you'd have to clean it up and then you would likely have to plate both the top the sides and the bottom in a manner that the load that goes through that area is carried further back and forward to where the load is distributed now that brings up the next problem is is that like i said earlier in the video that frame is apparently made out of higher strength than what they used to steel now, what steel that is, who knows? It could be proprietary to Chrysler, and they may not even release information on the metallurgy of what it's made out of. That's a huge problem because anytime you're welding on, you know, some kind of structural steel that you're unknown as to what it's made out of, there's a high probability of failure. Like you may need to post heat before welding. To a certain temperature on that metal you may need to watch how hot the metal gets as you're welding it and then you may need to keep it hot after you weld it and slowly cool it not to mention who knows maybe the whole frame was heat treated in an oven after welding originally without knowing specifics like that it's kind of a slippery slope to attempt to repair that because you might be able to successfully weld it back together and then you fish plate it on the sides for extra strength and then you have a crack everywhere that you welded it because you used the wrong filler or you didn't heat treat it properly. And due to the liability in that respect is why I think a lot of people, especially dealerships, just flat out will refuse to do a repair of that type on that. If the information is readily available as far as what it's made out of and, and a welding procedure exists that uh, is approved and tested, I would say it would be not really a big issue to repair that. I think it can be repaired. If it was my truck and I had no warranty, I would, I would definitely do a repair. However, again, I would be doing a lot of research to see what it's made out of and do maybe even some testing, even take a piece and send it to a lab just to get an idea of the content of the steel, just so my repair is gonna last. 
because the last thing you want to do is have it repaired and then end up having it fail on the freeway or something, you know. Um, last I read on these trucks, the frame repair, so essentially a new frame was somewhere between sixteen and twenty thousand dollars. So, not exactly the cheapest repair. All right. Well, with all of that said, I think you guys probably know where I stand on it, and you've probably already made an opinion. I mean, a very realistic uh, opinion on this whole situation is that these trucks likely were overloaded. And it kind of proves the point that if you're going to haul a lot of weight, you should probably get a 4,500 or bigger truck. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I've overloaded many an F-150 and Chevy 1500 in my day. But, you know, things aren't really built like they used to be. I mean, no offense to modern trucks. I mean, they haul more weight legally than anything ever did in history. But that's just the thing is that they're engineered to where they do what exactly what they say. And when you go outside of that, good luck. I think this whole situation is really just a fault of using the wrong tool for the job. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate because who wants to spend seventy, eighty, hundred thousand dollars on a nice truck and you can't even put 5,000 pounds in it without the frame breaking or 6,000. And I get that, but... You know, the safety factor and the engineering on it, you know, without a doubt. Those Dodge trucks, that frame, the way they did that and the way that they all break in the same spot, I think that that's an engineering and welding design problem. Not to say that if they solve that by reinforcing that area that something else isn't going to break when you overload it. You know, that's realistically going to be an issue. But get yourself a cabin chassis if you want a flatbed and want to, you know, haul a lot of weight. And... You know, I'm a little bit brand loyal. I tend to buy Ford trucks. They're heavier duty 250, 350 trucks because they last and they're fairly cheap to keep on the road. Based on my experience, everyone that has a heavy duty Dodge truck, like 3,500 and 4,500 that I know, and I know a lot of guys with tow trucks and stuff, they just don't seem to last as long as a Ford's. The reason the guys around here at least buy them is because they're probably six to seven thousand dollars less than a Ford truck, especially on the used market. You can pick them up for almost half of what a good Ford truck of the same class sells for. Whether or not that matters, I mean, Dodge trucks, I, I like them. They look cool. I think that they, you know, engine wise seem pretty good. I mean, all the trucks have their problems, let's be honest. But if I was going to buy something to haul a lot of weight, I'd be looking at an F-450, 550 truck. And I wouldn't screw around, or at least a cabin chassis truck. Like, don't screw around with those trucks with normal beds on them. Like, you're just asking for trouble. The frames on those aren't designed to be putting flat beds on. But yeah, anyways, I thought it was interesting. I thought I would share my opinion, throw my head my opinion in the hat, you know, not that it means anything, but maybe we could all learn from this and go forward smarter individuals. If you got an opinion on this or have any thoughts, I'd like to hear it, you know, be respectful. Like <laughs> I get it. We, we get pretty brand loyal on stuff and you know, it's the, uh, oh, it's a Dodge. That's why it failed. Well, I don't think that's the case here because there's, trust me, there's plenty of pictures of Fords out there with broke frames too. So it, it, this is just kind of like a, a general issue, but I don't know. I put my information out there. You can digest it, give an opinion, whatever. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.